Welcome to In Short, what's new and news in the world of 3D printers. For engineering.com, I'm Todd Grimm. This In Short is all about materials. As noted in a recent blog post, I believe that materials, now held as a disadvantage, will become one of the greatest advantages, setting 3D printing apart from all other processes. To get your creative juices going, ponder this. Name one other class of technology that can process metal, thermoplastic, thermoplastic elastomers, thermoplastic polyurethane, sand, glass, ceramic, concrete, paper, electrical inks, and biological materials. Let's carry it one step further. What other class of technology can do multiple materials and blend on the fly compositions? And that's where the opportunity lies. When research, science, applications, and demand come together to promote new, never before used materials and material combinations. Let's start this little journey of exploration on the research front. The University of Dayton Research Institute, UDRI, received a $3 million grant to provide specialized materials for use in 3D printing. UDRI will work with its program partners, Stratasys, Poly1, and RP Plus M to develop aircraft engine components for GE Aviation and others. UDRI has already developed a highly specialized nanomaterial that will reinforce the polymer feedstock giving the finished product greater strength and stiffness. It will also make it electrically conductive. Now for something a bit more exotic, let's turn to the University of Exeter in the UK. Exeter's research team has developed a new method for making, that is making in the 3D printer, an aluminum composite and aluminum composite parts by mixing relatively inexpensive powders. Combining these elements causes a reaction which results in the production of particles that are 600 times smaller than the width of a human hair. The reaction uniformly distributes the particles throughout the material, making it very strong. This reaction, this creation of the composite material, happens in a selective laser melting machine. The aluminum composite allows production of lighter structural designs and innovative geometries. Now I'll move from research to materials that are available today and processes that hold a lot of promise for the future. For those of you with laser centering systems, you now have a new class of material, thermoplastic polyurethane, better known as TPU. Bayer Material Sciences developed the TPU and has awarded a brand license to Solid Composites GmbH, which will market the materials under the Desmosynth name. The first product is Desmosynth X92A-1. Previously, only soft elastic materials and rigid thermoplastics have been available commercially in laser centering systems or for use in laser centering systems. Beyond the advantages of TPUs, Desmosynth has some processing advantages versus polyamides. The chamber temperature is low, it's only 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Parts have a very low tendency to warp and there's no aging of the material in the machine, so it has a 100% recycling rate. That's double what you see with polyamides. Object also bridges the gap between flexible and rigid materials, and it can do that in any combination. It announced 39 new digital materials available with its Connex line of multi-material 3D printing systems. With these, Object now offers 107 materials, ranging from rigid to rubber-like and transparent to opaque. And that opaque can come in many hues. The sheer number of materials is impressive, but the exciting thing is that the digital materials are blended on the fly. And don't forget that a single part can have up to 14 of these digital materials. Now back to my opening question. Ask yourself, outside of 3D printing, what other process can do that? And the sky's the limit, literally, when you combine 3D printing processes for a hybrid approach. Stratasys and Optimec combine FDM and aerosol jet to print a smart wing with functional electronics for an unmanned aerial vehicle. The Optimec aerosol jet system printed a conformal sensor, antenna, and circuitry directly onto an FDM built wing. According to Aurora Flight Sciences, the ability to fabricate functional electronics into complex structures using 3D printing can allow UAVs to be built more quickly and with more customization. Printed conformal electronics aren't the only amazing thing about the aerosol jet system. It also has the ability to dynamically mix materials during the deposition process to produce functionally graded structures, an ability that it shares with Optimax other technology, 
laser engineered net shaping or lens. So what are functionally graded materials? I'm glad you asked. These are gradual transitions from one composition to the next. In the world of lenses direct metals, this would mean a part could, for example, start in one corner as 100% copper, slowly transition to 100% tool steel in the center, and then gradually transition to 100% titanium in the opposite corner. Rochester Institute of Technology, RIT for short, recently picked up an aerosol jet system for the functionally graded materials as well as its ability to print viscous inks on non-planar surfaces. Its primary use will be to develop solid oxide fuel cells, batteries, and photovoltaics using advanced nanomaterials such as quantum dots. And by the way, the aerosol jet system can also print biological materials. How's that for a unique, unmatched advantage that sets 3D printing apart from all other technologies? Well, that's it for this edition of InShort. For further information and links to all the news featured in this episode, check out our 3D Printer Zone. On behalf of the Engineering.com team, thank you for watching InShort.